The bill is really strict in terms of the safeguards that have been put in place. So two doctors would have to be involved in the process and it would have to be signed off by a High Court judge. That's the only bill in the world that has those three layers of scrutiny. There are also very strict eligibility criteria in terms of this is just for terminally ill people, as the title has always said from the start, and it's for those terminally ill people who have got less than six months to live. But also they have to have capacity, and also there has to be absolutely no evidence of coercion or pressure. They have to make a clear and informed decision that this is what they want to do. So throughout the process, there are layers and layers of safeguards and protections, which I believe will, will probably make it the most robust piece of legislation in the world. Of the bill, Kim, led beta. Terminally ill adults, end of life bill. Second reading, what day? Friday the 29th of November. Friday the 29th of November. Yeah, I think the other thing that I've been a bit upset about is the, the way some people have said this has all been rushed. Well, it hasn't been rushed. The debate's been going on for decades. Uh, the debate, even since Parliament came back, has been going on for, for months. Um, and actually, second reading on the 20, 29th of November will be the start of the parliamentary process, not the end. Uh, so the bill will go to bill committee, it will go into the Lords, it, you know, it will be scrutinised along the way. And then within the bill, um, my suggestion is it could be a couple of years before the law is actually implemented, because there will clearly be structures that will need to be put in place. So this isn't going to happen in a rush. It's not going to happen overnight. It, um, you know, once the law is passed, there will be even more consultation to make sure we get it right. Um, so we're talking years, and and again, that is heartbreaking in some respects because many families are, and people have written to me saying it'll be too late for me because they know that they will probably die before the bill comes into effect, um, and that's really sad to think about. But, you know, the people who've campaigned on this for years, who have got the experience of the law as it stands, are the people whose voices, I think, need to be at the heart of this debate, the people who have lost loved ones who've taken their own lives, the people who have had lonely deaths in other countries, and the people who have watched loved ones die in front of them, often over days, sometimes over excruciatingly painful hours. It's their voices that should be at the heart of this debate, because... They are clear evidence that the law as it stands is not fit for purpose. And I really do hope that colleagues in Parliament take the opportunity to speak to those families in the coming weeks so they understand that the status quo is just not acceptable. It's been a really tough process, if I'm honest. I've spent a huge amount of my time talking about death and, for most cases, pretty horrible deaths. Um, but you know what? I actually think that's a good thing as well because... We don't talk about death in this country, we're not very good at talking about it. And I've had people come up to me who've said to me, do you know what, Kim, thank you for doing this, because I've gone home and I've spoken to my parents about what they might want when it came to the end of their life. I've spoken to friends, I've spoken to colleagues, and actually if we can facilitate that debate, whatever happens with the bill, I think that's got to be a good thing. In the same way that we're having a debate about palliative care, we're talking about the rights of disabled people, we're talking about some really serious issues, and for me that's got to be a good thing. I found it hard, I found it harrowing, hearing stories where people have lost, lost loved ones under really difficult circumstances and I know the energy it takes them to tell their story every time and I've thanked them for that. For that. Um, so whatever happens, I think this has been a really positive thing to do on a really difficult subject. Um, I hope we can do justice for the families that are feeling the inadequacy of the, the, inadequacy of the current law. Um, but I hope those wider debates can also carry on, irrespective of what happens with the bill.